In the summer of 1932, some 30 to 50,000 protesters converged on Washington, D.C. Demonstrations had sprung up around the country as the hardships of the Great Depression took hold. What made these protesters different is that they were veterans of World War I. Many were unemployed and were accompanied by their families. The United States was in its third year of economic turmoil, and unemployment had surged to a staggering 23% across parts of the country. Amidst this backdrop, World War I veterans embarked on a mission to implore the United States government for the early disbursement of bonuses owed to them for their military service during the war. However noble their intentions were, they met with a tragic twist of fate. The peaceful marches they undertook turned violent, as the United States Army, under orders, resorted to force to disband the protesters and evict them from their encampments. Why did these veterans, once defenders of freedom, face the retribution of their own nation's military might? Hello and welcome to Anything History. In today's video, we look at the story behind the Bonus Army March and how this nearly forgotten bit of history influenced politics and how we care for our soldiers, sailors, and airmen. So what led to the Bonus March on Washington? At the time, many believed that money tarnished the patriotic service of the veteran. However, the government gave a payout to civilian workers during the war. Lobbying by the American Legion pressured the government to provide some benefits for the veterans. In 1924, Congress had passed the World War Adjusted Compensation Act, which provided for the issuance of bonus certificates to veterans of World War I. These certificates were essentially promises to pay veterans a lump sum in 1945. The bonus money equated to about a dollar per day for domestic and a dollar twenty-five for overseas service. To me, it does seem odd that the bonus payout was not until 1945, some 27 years after the end of the war. This was due in part to the Harding and Coolidge administration's reluctance to support the veterans. President Coolidge, in fact, vetoed the bill, but it was overridden by Congress. Even though the Congress passed the bill, they chose to kick the can down the road and put off the actual payment for another 21 years. A year after the bill passed, many veterans could borrow against these future payments. However, as the Great Depression worsened, many veterans faced economic hardship and unemployment. By 1932, they found themselves in debt with the economy crashing around them. They began to demand the early payment of their bonuses. That July, thousands of veterans, along with their families and supporters, gathered in Washington, D.C. to protest and put pressure on Congress to authorize the immediate payment of their bonuses. They set up makeshift camps around the city, including an encampment across the Anacostia River from the capital, known as Hooverville, in honor of President Hoover. The marches, the camps, and the veterans' presence put additional pressure on the Hoover administration, which was already struggling to address the economic crisis affecting the country. Tensions escalated as the veterans' demands were not immediately met, and clashes between the veterans and law enforcement occurred. On July 28, a large group of veterans marched through the streets to the Capitol, where they intended to present their demands directly to Congress. The protesters were mostly peaceful and unarmed. As the march came closer to the Capitol, tensions escalated. Fearing potential unrest, the government responded with a significant police and military presence around the veterans. Clashes between the veterans and law enforcement increased. President Hoover ordered the U.S. Army, led by General Douglas MacArthur, to disperse the protesters and evict the veterans and their families from their camps. MacArthur confronted the veterans and protesters with tear gas, tanks, and cavalry to disperse the veterans. The use of military force against the veterans garnered significant public backlash and further damaged President Hoover's already tarnished reputation. The incident also highlighted the dire economic conditions and the suffering of many Americans during the Great Depression. The aftermath of the Bonus Army March and the government's response played a role in shaping public opinion and contributed to Roosevelt's victory in 1932. Roosevelt's subsequent New Deal policies aimed at addressing the economic crisis and provided some relief to Americans in need. The Bonus Army March on Washington, D.C. highlighted the increasing economic hardships faced by Americans during the Great Depression. Additionally, it questioned if society even had a responsibility to aid the struggling veterans. In 1944, Congress enacted the first GI Bill to prevent the mistakes that resulted in the Bonus Army March. 
The bill offered immediate compensation, including mortgage assistance, small business loans, unemployment compensation, and tuition assistance. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. Also, please leave a comment. Let me know if you thought the bonus march protesters were right, or was the government correct in denying them the immediate payment of their funds?